What's up YouTube, Dar here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you a test stand combo video for Rescue A. So this is the new proposed meta, um, definitely a very exciting and powerful deck to put together, and I've already shown you a profile of this, so make sure you check that out so you can see exactly what we're playing and how we plan to run this video. So, with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. With all that out of the way, after a very decent shuffle and a good old cut, we're going to do two test stands going first and two going second to show you the aggressive and defensive nature of this deck. So our opening hand of five will be one, two, three, four, five. Well, evidently, we like hand traps. Um, this hand is actually fine, to be completely honest. The irony of all of this is Rota gives us the one card combo and then our opponent just doesn't play. This is mental. So we're going to activate Reinforcing the Army. We're then going to be able to search out directly. So this is how to show you basically a one card combo with a live action test hand. <laughs> um, so you're going to search out your one card combo with Airlifter. You're going to hope and pray they don't Ash, Imperm or stop it because then you'll go, um set to pass, play through my four hand traps. Uh, but Airlifter is gonna resolve, we're gonna search ourselves out, of course, the brand new card in the form of Emergency. We're gonna activate the Emergency, we're going to summon out our Hydrant, wherever it may be. I bet they're all stacked together at the top, yeah, of course they are. Uh, we're gonna special summon out our Hydrant and then resolve Emergency by tributing off the Airlifter. We're then gonna activate our Hydrant again, hope and pray they don't have Imperms, Veilers and Interruptions. Uh, and we're gonna go directly for our Turbulence. Terminus will then summon itself down by banishing Emergency and, of course, Airlifter. And this is going to allow us to then activate Terminus's effect to set four from our deck. So, Rescue. Nice. We're going to go directly for... Not Emergency. Extinguish. Alert. And the final one, Contain. Now, because we have a Rescue Ace Hydrant and we set these all off of Turbulence, we can actually activate one of these during the same turn they have been set. So, off of the back of Hydrant, we'll be able to use this effect and we're going to use Alert. So, Alert lets us add a Rescue Ace monster from our graveyard to our hand, or if you control a Hydrant, you can actually add it from the deck to the hand instead. So, now that we've chosen to activate that, I'm actually going to set the remaining three as they will no longer be used. You can shuffle them up. Your opponent doesn't need to know exactly what card is where, um, which is a very important thing if they're trying to target a particular card with like an MS. T, Twin Twister or Cosmic. Uh, so obviously off the back of Alert, we're going to search out our brand new one, the Preventer. Uh, don't worry, the rest of the hand is just Jay chilling with four hand traps back down here. Uh, we then have the ability to activate Pre Preventer, banishing the Alert, summoning itself down and you're set up and ready to go. Now we're going to go full combo. We're, literally, if you wanted to, you're on your fourth summon, you could end it here. You could set two Imperm and just pass. Like, that's the safety route. Your opponent's got to deal with a 2800 booty, a 3k booty, and then a card that cannot be targeted or destroyed. So you're in a very good position, and then they've got to play through technically three imperms and then one pop, and you also have the ability to revive if any one of these gets sent to the graveyard, or steal from your opponent's graveyard. But because this is a test stand, um, we are going to push this to its limits. So we're going to turn Hydrant into, I'm going to show you how consistent the um, Dark Fluid combo is, into Link Karibo. We're then going to link Preventer and link Karibo, and we're going to go into our Reaperdonkus. We're then going to use Preventer's effect to summon back the airlifter to the zone that Reaperdonkus points to. Reaperdonkus effect to turn this into a Cyverse. Link that off and go into your link decoder. Link decoder and your Dino and go into your Protect Code Talker. You'll then be able to trigger link decode Talker's effect to bring itself back. And then you want to use your Turbulence, not the link decoder and your Protect to go into Firewall. In doing so, because you turned Hydrant into your Link Karibo at the start, you can actually banish Link Karibo and your Reaperdonkus to form a Link Free to bring back the Pro Code Talker. You can then use the effect of the Firewall to bring back any of your monsters in the graveyard. Now, ultimately, I always go for Airlifter because you want to leave Hydrant in the graveyard as you're gonna bring that back with uh, Rescue during your opponent's turn, so keep that in mind. Now you've got free Cyverse, you're going to be able to treat this as a Link 3, a Link 1, and Firewall as a Link 1 to go into your Firewall Dark Fluid. In doing so, you will actually activate Firewall Dark Fluid's effect. You're going to send your Cyverse Fusion. This means that you can negate a spell or trap your opponent activates, which is very, very useful because it means you don't auto lose to something like an, imp uh, an Evenly or a... Um, an Evenly or a Lightning Storm or a Duster or anything like that. 
If you hold back your air lifter, you're then going to set your two in perms if you've now got three more space. This is obviously screaming, please evenly me. And if your opponent doesn't know about this, they're going to be so surprised when they go, use up their battle phase, thinking they're going to clear this board and you just go, okay, negate. So we're going to pass our opponent's turn. Now I'm going to flip these up just so you can see exactly what we've got. Now obviously extinguish and contain are completely useless right now, but during the draw phase, activate rescue, get this done nice and early. This will then allow you to bring back your hydrant. The best thing about the rescue aces is their fire, so they are not targetable by bestials. So now our opponent, like, bar a kaiju on this specifically, and then following, it, following that up with like a duster, which would absolutely suck, um, you're in a very good position because they've got to play through. At least one ash, and what I mean by at least one ash, definitely one ash, you're going to have a follow up for the next turn. Two imperms, so that's two of their spell and trap columns locked off, and they'll probably forget about that as well. Um, you've already used rescue. You've then got the ability to target the thermal to your opponent controls, destroy it, and because you control hydrant, it cannot be used, um, you cannot activate the effects of that monster that name this turn. You also have contain, which means you can negate an, uh, a monster effect and it cannot be used as link material, fusion material, synchro material, or XYZ, and cannot attack. So like, your opponent's completely locked down. If they're somehow still able to go, you also still have the firewall, which will allow you to send your aggregator, and this will then negate as well. So you completely burnt your opponent out of all resources imaginable. Now, because you've already got the setup, let's draw for our turn. The card you're gonna to wanna to go to off of the back of Elif. What, really, third ash? Really? Um, so we play for our opponent's turn. We still have our Neo Tempest, and if my understanding is correct, um, it's actually currently sitting on a 8,000 attack booty. If your opponent's got nothing on the board, you're just gonna attack battle phase game over. Even if they do have something on the board, you can still go airlifter, and you can very easily go to emergence and try and start the whole combo again. The only thing you're gonna be missing is you're not gonna be able to set four. So what you're gonna wanna do here, the only thing you will be able to do is with emergency is you can banish it to then reset one of the traps in the graveyard. But what we're actually gonna do off of the back of your airlifter is because this allows you to add a rescue ace spell from your deck, you're gonna go for HQ, you're gonna activate the HQ. This will then allow you to put all four back. So you'll go contain, um, extinguish, rescue, and why not uh, alert, which I believe is banished. Yep, there we go. You're gonna put all those back into your deck. And you're gonna draw one. So we'll just draw the top one. Broken, okay, we'll take that. Um, you don't even need to use Emergency because you still have the ability of activating Hydrant. Hydrant can then uh, add from the deck to the hand your Turbulence. You can then summon down the Turbulence by banishing two from the graveyard, which is very easily done. Because you can banish the old Turbulence and the Preventer. Turbulence set four, nice. Rescue, alert, contain. You kind of get the point on this one. Extinguish. Um, because we control Hydrant, we can activate one of these these turns. So we're going to activate our alert, and this will allow you to um, add from the deck to the hand. So you're just going to add back your uh, wherever it may be. Preventer. Then you'd banish the alert that is now currently in the graveyard. Summon down the Preventer. I mean, this is more than enough for damage. If you really, really needed to, you could actually activate Dark Fluid and send a fire. And this would mean that it can attack twice because it will now have fire and dark attribute. And it will be way over 8k. It will be 10,500 just in attack. So it's like, okay, well, I need to clear off a monster. I need to clear off a monster. I need to clear off a monster. I'm going to attack the game. So a little bit overextension, but that just kind of shows you how powerful that one card is. Now, obviously, I know a lot of people will probably be like, yes, but... If we had added, if we had activated anything, Nibiru, Imperm, Valar, um, Ash, then that turn would have been over. Very true, very very true. But then you still wanted to deal with an Ash Blossom and two Imperms, so I still had three interactions to your one. Uh, anyway, so we're going to shuffle this up. We will now again go first. That was a very long combo, but I wanted to show you how it can interact during your opponent's turn and how you can build up a board after going through your opponent's turn. So, after a very nice shuffle and another good old cut, we will go for our second test hand going first, being one, two, three, four, five. Okay, not too shabby. Now, if you're trying to play around Droll, definitely wouldn't activate Reinforcement in the Army because you already have Airlifter. Um, you've also got the ability to add it from the graveyard to the hand. Now, this is the one you kind of really don't want in your hand early doors. At least the other one can revive from the graveyard should you be able to get one there. Uh, I'm still playing Book of Eclipse opposed to uh, Book of Moon, entirely just personal preference. Um, I'm going to activate Rota anyway, I'm going to search ourselves out a warrior. Now because I already have Airlifter, I'm actually going to go directly for Impulse. 
For those of you that do not know, Impulse has the ability that when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, annoyingly, um, you can tribute this card from your hand or face up on the field to special summon a machine rescue ace from the deck. So it means if your opponent like Dark Rulers you or tries to turn the board off and they activate a monster effect, you can still get a hydrant to the board, making all of your cards additionally live again. So we've got a follow up for that one. Uh, we'll normal summon the airlift that we're going to use airlifter's effect. This is going to get us into rescue. So this is kind of going to, uh, it's not rescue, emergency. This is going to show you like what you can do if you've already opened up some of the pieces you would search later on. It just gives you a bit more hand advantage going down. Uh, we then activate emergency. Of course, the idea is that you're going to summon out your hydrant, your tribute off the airlifter and go this way here. Now the best thing is, because you've got the Hydrant already, you can actually just banish Emergency and Lifter and summon down Turbulence, meaning that now this can't be targeted when you choose to activate its effect to search yourself out a Preventer. Now you don't actually have to go directly for Preventer, if you want to get more monsters on the board, um, you could actually very easily go for something like Fire Engine. Um, Fire Engine will just be a free extender should you need it. So you're now going to activate Turbulence. Now the thing is, you've already gone through, or you've already opened up an alert. So we're going to go for Contain, um, we're going to go for Emergency, we're going to go for the other two, Rescue and Extinguish. Now obviously this does telegraph you've already got alert in the hand, but because we do uh, already have, um, because we already control Hydrant, we can now activate this and complete our combo anyway. And this will then allow us to add a Preventer to the hand. It's a real shame that Turbulence can't set the uh, field spell because there are times when you're like, oh, I really wish it could, um, but annoyingly it's only normals or quick plays. So we're going to set all of these. Uh, keep in mind, we haven't actually used the effect to be able to activate one of these to turn it set. We've already gone through Emergency, but we do have the ability to activate Rescue if we wanted to. Um, we're now going to be able to activate Preventer. Preventer will summon itself down by Banishing Alert. And because we've summoned a monster, we can also summon down Fire Engine, so we've got an additional monster on the board. This is only going to help us just have a bit more board presence as we move into our opponent's turn. You can still complete the combo. It's so crazy that it's just one card combo gets you into um, the full kind of Protect from Spells and Traps. You also have the ability to go through Heat Soul if you want to draw more cards. Considering our hand doesn't actually contain any hand traps, we could do something along those lines as well. Um, there is a way to try and go through Heat Soul and then build your way up into um, the Dark Fluid, but I think you're kind of asking for a bit of trouble. And what I mean by that is you could very easily just go, okay, cool, turn this into... You'd still probably do the exact same play of turning this into Link Rebo. Um, and then you would need a link to Cybers, which would be something along the lines of Proxy F. Um, trying to think of the best way of going about this. I mean, like I can make all of these not be targeted. Um, obviously, I've got rid of Hydrant, so I now can't uh, um, activate Rescue until I bring back Hydrant, which again is fine as long as I can get Hydrant banished. So it's not the end of the world. There's still a lot of plays to make. I very easily could actually activate um, Preventer with any one of these two as well to kind of give me Reapodonkus. But you kind of want Reaper Donkers to then turn Airlifter into a Cyverse. So, entirely up to you on where you want to try and take it from here. So we'll use the Link Rebo and we'll use the Preventer and we're going to go into the... Um, actually, maybe I don't need to. Let's do it a little bit differently. So let's keep it that way. Let's use Preventer and Fire Engine because we've extended that a little bit further. And we will go into... Let's go into Proxy F. Uh, we can use Preventer to bring back the Airlifter. Uh, now, if we wanted to, you could use Proxy S effect. You could actually fuse itself, but you need to use two monsters with different attributes. Uh, sorry, two monsters, same attribute, different types. We've got a warrior, and of course, we've got a uh, machine. So if you wanted to, you could go very easy, go Proxy F, fuse those two together, and then bring out your Mud Dragon. So the only reason you do this is it means your cards can't be targeted. And then what you'd do here, in doing so, is you'd then use these two. So you've got two Cyverse with uh, different attributes. You've got a Fire and a Dark. So you can then link these two together and go into a heat cell. You can then pay a thousand life points to draw a card. Nice as a hand trap. Um, so then what you'd then be able to do is during your opponent's turn, I'll do this a little bit differently. Like obviously that was all firewall combo. I could have gone easy firewall combo, but we'll do this with like hand advantage. So obviously Eclipse could have been really nice to go here as well, but we'll go with Imperm. And then what you do is you pass your opponent's turn, during their draw phase, you activate heat cell, you draw another card. What is going on? It's like my whole deck is all like 10 Rescue Ace cards and then all Imperms. So we'll draw this card and then you'll obviously activate Rescue in the early doors because then this will allow you to bring out your Hydrant. 
meaning that you're now pretty much all of your extinguishing container now both live uh, and then you've also got emergency so it's just whether or not you wanted the draw cards or if you wanted to go into the firewall card I feel that firewall was probably a little bit better for the pure fact that by getting into the firewall you then got that spell and trap negate like if they evenly you now you just cry deep inside and um, the, probably the only thing you would hold back on is an emergency um, but sadly you don't have anything banished to then bring back off of the uh, preventer so again, just a very standard test and I wanted to do it a little bit differently. Like I said, there was, there was very easily different routes that you could show that one. But as long as I can like, you can see that that was the one card combo that could get you as far as you wanted to go in the first combo that we did. So rather than repeating myself, showing you the exact same combo to prove the consistency, um, I can show you a different route as well. So after another decent shuffle, <clears throat> and another cut, we'll now start going second. So we'll start showing the aggression behind this deck as well. So decent shuffle. Good old cut. Starting hand of six being one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, I mean, the hand's playable. You've got the ability to normal summon down the hydrant and then special summon down the fire attacker. And in doing so, you've now got the ability that this can't be targeted. So this will then resolve a part of your combo that you need to. Um, you do have the option as well to activate Prosperity should you be trying to get into an airlifter. Um, I'm going to use Prosperity now just to kind of show you what cards you can get rid of. Now, with your extra deck, you've got a couple of different options. You can get rid of your whole draw and target protection engine, which is a very quick, easy, free card engine at the very least. And then you'd find three more that you can get rid of. You can get rid of access code if you don't need to deal with back row. If you do need to deal with back row, then you could probably get rid of your full um, firewall, Protect Code Talker, Dark Fluid, um, Meteolic, uh, Cyverse, and even Reapodonkus. Like, there's your six right there. If you're like, you're not going to use this combo at all, get rid of those six. Very easy six draw. Um, another one, so like, if you're replacing these, if you're just like, I'm still going to play this because the Firewall can actually be a game ender on its own, then the other six you can go for is you go, right, well, I'm not going to regain resource. I'm pushing for an OTK. These are the six I'm going to use. You can even get rid of Almirage as well in place of one of these if you want to keep your Sunlight Rule or your Access Code, so... Just as these six examples, obviously it's half damage, you're not gonna guarantee the OTK, and that's probably where getting rid of access code as opposed to getting rid of um, the firewall is probably a little bit more advised for the pure fact that the firewall can still be built, break a board, and then still defend the board from that point on. So we'll go for our six, all we're really doing is something like emergency um, or a airlifter, there you go. Perfect hand. Now, obviously, the idea is if you get hit with a droll, you're probably going to want to be like the safest option from all of these reveals is emergency for the pure fact that your emergency can then tribute any of these in the hand and you'll still get the exact same outcome as you would have had. You just wouldn't get hit by like if your opponent hits you with droll, you're like, ah, crap. You're not going to be going as far, but at least if you take the emergency rather than airlifter, you'll still get a play to make. These two definitely not happening. Uh, we don't need double airlifter and double emergency. So the idea is, out of these two, which ones do you want to deal with? If your opponent's got an Omni Negate, you're probably going to go with Emergency. If they've got a Monster Negate, you're probably going to go with um, Airlifter. Now, the best thing about this as well is you can actually chain block the Airlifter, which is really, really cool. So we'll take the Airlifter just for now. So we're going Normal Summon 1, um, Normal Summon cha um, Airlifter, Chaining 1 Airlifter, Chaining 2 Fire Attacker. So we're going to summon those. We're going to resolve the Airlifter. You're going to get your Emergency. You're going to activate the Emergency. You're going to Special Summon out your Hydrant. Whatever it may be, uh, we'll actually tribute off the hydrant in the hand. You could very easy tribute off the airlifter. It doesn't make much of a difference right now. Um, it'll all be used as fodder later on anyway. So then what we'll do here is we'll actually activate the effect of hydrant, which obviously can't be targeted, and we're going to search out our turbulence. We're going to use turbulence's effect. We're going to banish emergency and hydrant. Summon itself down. Activate turbulence. Set for extinguish. Contain. Alert and rescue. Now, because the hand is quite aggressive, your opponent is activating any monster effects, you do have the effect of your um, monitor and you also have the effect of impulse as well. I suppose what would have been a little bit better if you wanted to get a bit more um, is you could actually get rid of the monitor instead. And then what it means is rather than getting a container and extinguished, you could actually go for something along the lines of um, an emergency for a follow up the next turn. And then what you do is you bring this back off of your preventer later on in the turn and then get to reset one of your traps. But we'll play as we've got it. Now, again, you've got two options here, which is really kind of cool. Because you can activate one of these, the turn is set. You could, in theory, um, activate Extinguish this turn to pop one of your opponent's cards. 
and then you don't get your search off of this, but you still have the plays to make off of the rest of these four that are currently sitting on the board. So totally up to you if you want to go down that route. Um, that'd just be a route where you can activate extinguish, deal with that, and then if you can get an emergency in the graveyard, great, you can reset that extinguish, which is really funny. Um, so now your board's currently like this. You've got three K boss ones here, 22 there, 17 there. So now it's entirely up to you on how far you'd want to climb and how much further you'd want to push. So ultimately, I believe I can still do the um, firewall combo. So we're going to Link Rebo. You would then need to use, um, actually, no, I think we need the float. We needed the float to do it. Um, or maybe I don't. Maybe if I use, rather than going, yeah, we need to go Link Rebo. So then use Link Rebo plus that and go into Reapodonkus. Oh no, it needs to be level four or lower. Okay, maybe I can't. Okay, well maybe we don't need to go as aggressive. So, let's see. We'll try and reset that. I was trying to look at, uh, trying to go, uh, being a little bit smart on that, but I don't think I need to. Leaving it at this is just fine. You've like popped a card already. Hang on, you're not on them. Um, it's got 22, 3K, so three, four, five, six. 6 9 is all I've got on board at the moment, so we kind of want to get a little bit more aggressive. I think that's more just my like placement of the entire board. Um, I mean, we can still go into Proco Talker, we just don't get the revival of the Link Deco Talker. I suppose my issue is the placement. If I didn't place that there but placed this here, then I'd still have the full combo because then you'd go like this, go to this, you'd then use your Fire Attacker and this. And you'd go into Reapodonkus, Reapodonkus would make this a Cyverse, you'd then turn this into this. Uh, and then you would use these two, and you'd go into this. Effective Link Decoder comes back, link these two together, go into Firewall, then use the Link Decoder to come back. And then the best thing about this is if you don't want to be gaining the resource back from the graveyard, you can then use the effect because you can be able to do that with alert and rescue the next turn. Uh, effect of fire will bounce a card. So you've popped the card, bounce a card, and then you can just go straight into, go with these three. Obviously two of those get banished. There we go. Go into your dark fluid. And then your dark fluid has three targets in the extra deck remaining, your access code, your cybers, and your meteorologic uh, agitator. So technically, if you need to like negate one of your opponent's monster effects, you can send an agitator. Um, doesn't really matter. This one that will then go up to 55 is going to be half damage. So you, you know, do whatever you need to do. And then during your opponent's turn, you've got the ability to use this again to send this. So you've got the spell and trap negate. You've got the ability to activate uh, rescue to bring back your hydrant. Uh, and then you've got the ability, if you want to, of alert that can allow you to add from the graveyard to the hand or add from the deck to the hand, which is absolutely fine. If your opponent activates any monster effect, you've got monitor that um, contribute this card from the hand or field, target a rescue race monster in your graveyard, accept itself and special summon it back. So that gives you access to stuff like turbulence. You can also get use access to what will probably be a little bit more effective in this kind of scenario is getting to fire attacker because by bringing back fire attacker, um, if a card of cards is added to your opponent's hand, except by drawing them, you get to draw two ditch one. Uh, you've still got Impulse, you've got Joy Springs, and you've also got Contain. So, a couple of different options there. Trying to pick the board apart, it just kind of shows you you can still maintain the Dark Fluid. Like, if everyone's like, oh, Dark Fluid is just a go first card, it's like, no, it's just a very, very, very high investment card because you do, like, the, the fact that it's such a high investment card and it doesn't have nib protection is beyond me, but um, still kind of cool. And the thing that the fact of the matter is as well, because it's all Cyverse related. It means that any kind of Cyverse monster that can be sent from Extra Deck to the Graveyard, if you can get one that can negate an effect, great. Like another one that I do really want to consider putting into this Extra Deck is the Wind Pegasus. For the pure fact that it's like it's another attribute, so it means that um, the Firewall can attack an additional time. It's just not as effective as a Instant Negate or a Spell and Trap Negate. Anyway, shuffling up, we're going to do our final test hand now. Go in second, starting with one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well, one card too late. Pretty much the exact same combo. Like, this is just showing the consistency of this. You've got four routes to airlifter, plus three routes to emergency naturally anyway. So totaling up seven copies of emergency in the deck, four copies of airlifter, you're in a very good position. So normal summon airlifter, did the exact same thing. Now at this point, because I've already opened up emergency, um, I'm probably gonna go directly for the field spell because it's the only card that I can't get from turbulence, which sucks. Um, but the HQ obviously gives me a tap boost. It gives me an additional normal summon if I want it. And it will also give me the ability to shuffle back some cards as well. 
then activate emergency. Now you could very easily activate emergency in the draw phase, um, and then that would allow you to get rid of the airlifter. But by keeping this airlifter on the board this time, it's also going to mean that my um, hydrant is non-targetable, which is really nice. So we'll treat off the airlifter rather than the airlifter on the board. Uh, activate hydrant, add turbulence. We've got the two in the graveyard now as well, which is really, really nice. Um, we still obviously have the heart open of rescue to add back from the graveyard, but because we control hydrant, we can actually monster reborn from our opponent's graveyard, which is quite nice because if I activate this now, I can shuffle it back and reset it off of the uh, HQ. So let's say I steal one of my opponent's monsters. Let's put it on the far right, far out of the way. Um, tell you what, where are my tokens? Um, usually I'd have my tokens to hand, but I don't know where they are. I probably left them here today from locals. Anyway, <laughs> so now this means I've got three cards in my graveyard. I've got Emergency, I've got Rescue Ace, and I've got Airlifter. Cue in mind that this lets you target Rescue Ace trap in the graveyard and reset it. So if I wanted to pop with a trap card, I actually leave Emergency in the graveyard. So we're going to banish Airlifter and the Rescue. We'll summon down Turbulence first. Obviously, I could banish one to summon down Preventer, but we're going to keep it as it is for now. Activate Turbulence. Turbulence is going to set four, or up to four. So Extinguish, Emergency, Contain and alert, oh, hello. We will then get maximum value out of all of this and we'll activate extinguish to pop one of our opponent's cards because obviously we control hydrant. We will then banish emergency to reset extinguish, um, which is absolutely fine because as long as we link off, we've then got preventer that can still do its dues. Now obviously, um, alert, none of these are gonna be used this turn, so you don't need to worry about that. We can now use hydrant, to this, I can then use Preventer, banishing this, summing it down. I've got the aggression on the board already, um, so now what you really need to do is kind of like upgrade a little bit. So it's entirely up to you if you wanted to upgrade into airlifter, um, if you wanted to upgrade, uh, well, you just need to upgrade your airlifter and move your place further forward, which isn't that big of an issue. So let's try, I'll tell you what, let's do airlifter, Link Karibo, go into Reapodonkus. Um, Wait, no, the other way around. Keep airlifter on the board. Yeah, keep airlifter on the board. We'll use Preventer and Link Karibo to make Reapodonkus. Preventer's effect to trigger, bring back airlifter. Uh, so I've got Dark, I've got an Earth. So we just kind of want to get a fire to the grave. So we'll use, doesn't really make much of a difference which one you use. So any Link 2 will do. So we'll use airlifter plus your uh, two airlifters. Gonna go into Sunlight Wolf. Sunlight Wolf's effect will trigger to let you add back one from the graveyard. So let's add back an airlifter for a follow-up at the next turn. And then what you wanna do here is you're then going to want to link these two together. I'm gonna to go into Access Code, Access Code effect to gain 2K. And then Access Code is gonna have three targets in the graveyard, so Earth, Fire, and Dark. So that's three additional cards popped with no response. Um, so you've ended up popping one card, you could have also booked a Moonda card as well while you had um, Preventer on the board, so either or. And then as long as you've cleared your opponent's entire front row, this should then total up to seven free. So we're just one monster short. Oh wait, no, if they control a monster as well. Ah, no. Nah. Okay, uh, we can then still activate HQ. So HQ can put back Rescue Emergency. Um, let's put back Hydrant. And let's put back, I've already got Airlifter, so let's put back Preventer. Um, so I can add one to the hand, which is absolutely fine. So we'll shuffle these four back in off of HQ. We've cleared an opponent's entire board. We can still control a contain. We're going to draw a card, imperm, nice, set that, pass. So now our opponent needs to rebuild their board. And to try and rebuild their board, they've got to deal with an Ash Blossom. They've got to deal with an imperm. They've got to deal with the ability for us to add an alert if we want to. Other than that, we can actually very easily activate Emergency. Emergency can very quickly and easily get us into a Hydrant. And then we need to tribute a card, so you can tribute off the Airlifter if you want to, if you want to follow this back up, which is absolutely fine because now we control Hydrant, we've now got a Pop, we've got an additional Negate, and then of course we've also got Alert, which will allow us to add a follow-up for the next turn, so we can go directly into our Fire, where are you, our Lifter. So that if our opponent does clear this off, we still have the one card restarter. And they're trying to do this after we've already broken their board. So a very, very tough ask. Oh, plus we already had this monster here. Completely forgot about this monster. So this monster could have finished the OTK right there. <laughs> so all of this is irrelevant because I forgot about the monster that I treated as a dice. Uh, yeah, and that's it for the combos. Well, combos, test and combos, playouts, you name it. Getting familiar with Rescue Ace. 
So I really do enjoy this set. I think it's very, very fun. I quite like this control aspect about it. There are a couple of concerns that I do have with this deck, like unless you hold back, fearing the Nibiru, which will probably do probably more so games two and three um, than game one. Um, game one, I'd probably just go off, go into Dark Fluid, and your opponent be like, what the hell does that card do? Oh, right, it does that. Let's go to game two. In game two, that's when you're going to need to start playing around Drolls, Nibs, and everything else a little bit more than you usually would. Anyway, uh, I hope this has been informative. I hope it's given you a bit of a breakdown of what the deck can do, how it can do it, and everything else in between. If you do have any questions at all, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. But for now, please, as absolutely always, stay safe, and of course, happy dueling.